Hey everyone, my name is Mirai and welcome to the Ice Boxer 42 Quick Setup Wizard video for World of Warcraft. There's a good bit to cover in order to get started and I'll be moving fairly quickly through this, but if at any time you find yourself stuck during the setup process, then I will suggest that you either reference the full detailed written guide linked in the video description or visit the Ice Boxer forum for further support. So with that said, let's get started. First, check to see if the game has been added to Innerspace by right-clicking on the crosshairs icon next to the system clock. If your game is not listed at the top, then add the game. But if the game is already listed, then you can ignore this next step. In this pop-up is where you'll name your game, point to Innerspace at the executable file used to launch the game, and fill in any parameters you may need or want. And if you have no idea what a parameter is, then you can safely ignore it. The easiest way to add World of Warcraft is by just dragging one of the two WoW executables from the game folder onto this area. And that's it. Hit OK and move into IS Boxer. Once in IS Boxer, you can start the Quick Setup Wizard from the Wizards menu up top. On step one, pick the game that you're playing. On step two, add characters to your team by filling in the fields on the right. IS Boxer may have detected some existing characters on your computer or from your current profile. If it did, then you will find them in the large box on the left, and you can use them if you'd like. If it didn't, no big deal, again, just fill in the necessary fields on the right. One thing to note here, for World of Warcraft, you can choose to use the launcher if you'd like. Personally, I'd recommend just using the default profile for now, but when we launch our team, I'll be quickly showing how to use the launcher as well. On step three, go ahead and give your team a name. On step four, pick a layout for your game windows. The drop-down at the top has a bunch of presets, and there are some options along the right-hand side for you to play with if you'd like. Normally, for beginners, I'd recommend just leaving those alone for now and going with a basic layout from the drop-down, but I will suggest making one change. On the right, set the Leave a Hole option to True, and then pick a layout from the top drop-down. In my opinion, a layout which utilizes this option will help new players when first starting off, and it will become more apparent why after we've finally launched our team. On step 5, set the foreground and background frame rates of your game clients and choose how you want to assign them to your CPU's cores or threads. Honestly, the defaults on this page are likely going to be just fine, but if you're afraid that your machine might not perform all that well when trying to run multiple game clients, then feel free to drop the background frame rate down a little bit, but not too low because a low background frame rate could easily cause unwanted effects. On step six is where you configure some of the core functionality for your team. And since we're quickly moving through this, the only thing I'm going to tell you is to just leave it all as default. The defaults are the defaults for a reason, and that's because they work well with the vast majority of users who are just getting started. But make note of some of these particular hotkeys because we'll be using these once we're in game. And I'll remind you of what they are again when we're there. So hit finish and you're done. Now in IS Boxer, the general workflow is that you'll click on something in the upper left pane, which will generally populate the lower left pane with information, and if there's something to click on down there, clicking on it will then populate the lower right pane with additional information as well. There are a lot of settings in IS Boxer, and it can seem overwhelming, but you'll probably only use a fraction of them until you have a better understanding of the program itself, and that is entirely expected. Now before moving forward, there are a few other things I'd like to point out. First, key maps and mapped keys. When clicking on a key map, you can see the mapped key is listed below, and to the right of the mapped key itself is the hotkey which it uses. A hotkey is an Iceboxer key binding, if you will, and it's the key or button used to execute a mapped key. Always on, base hotkeys, combat broadcast hotkeys, and the custom hotkeys key maps are where you'll normally be setting all of your hotkeys, and the other key maps can be left alone since they're mostly used for controlling things. For example, the hotkey used in order to get your characters to follow your main is by default Alt-F. You can change this to something different by simply clicking on the mapped key and adjusting the hotkey over in this area. However, I recommend leaving everything as default for now so you can better follow along with the directions I'll be giving once we're in game, since if you change this to something else prior to that and I tell you to press Alt F, then you might not remember what you changed this or any other hotkey to, which then leads to confusion. Next, I'd like to mention a few things about your character set. In here, you can see that there is a list of slot numbers assigned to each of the characters you recently added. This is the order in which you will need to log your characters into the game, and deviating from this is something which will cause core functionality to break. Iceboxer doesn't know anything beyond what you tell it, and here is where you're telling it which characters belong to each slot. Character set slots launch in numerical order and are generally tied directly to the regions within your window layout. Now while playing your team, what can help you identify a particular slot is the slot swap hotkey assigned to it. 
When clicking on a slot number, you will see that there is a hotkey to switch to this particular character. And the default is Control Alt Number, where number is the slot number you want to swap to. The last thing I'd like to point out is where all of this core functionality is that I've been referring to. With your character set selected in the upper left pane, as well as the lower left pane, click on the Virtual Mapped Keys tab in the lower right. Here is where you can adjust a handful of settings which will affect this character set and only this character set. These are the default settings that the wizard has set up for us, so I won't be changing them, but just know that they're here for future reference. Finally, every time you make a change in Iceboxer, you will need to export its settings over to Innerspace in order for them to take effect. And that is what we need to do right now before we can move forward. So go to File and choose to Export. If Iceboxer prompts you with recommending changes about frame rates, windowed modes, or anything else like that, I would suggest agreeing to them as it's just trying to enforce some compatibility settings. Now, after you've successfully exported, right-click on the Innerspace Crosshairs icon in the System Tray and launch your character set. If you chose the default profile, then your game clients are going to load directly into the window layout that you had previously selected. But if you chose to use the Blizzard Launcher, then you will be greeted with one and only one upon launching your character set. The Launcher option requires that you select the proper WoW account for the character set slot in which you're launching, then launch the game clients, and completely shut down the launcher. A second launcher will then appear, select the next account you want to launch, and launch it in the same manner. You can slightly speed this up by going into the launcher settings and choosing to exit the launcher completely after launching a game, but you will need to select this option for each and every launcher the very first time a character or character set is launched. Other than that, repeat this process until your team is fully launched. For the default profile users, you will be greeted with the login screen rather than the character selection screen. When logging into your game clients, it's usually necessary to disable key maps by pressing Shift-Alt-M. This removes Iceboxer from the loop and allows you to type freely without it interfering. Now, if your login information is the same across all of your accounts, you can speed this up by turning on Repeater, also known as Broadcasting, using Shift-Alt-R. This will allow you to type in all of your information simultaneously. And if you'd like that information to be saved, don't forget to check the Remember Account Name box below. Now, the first time you launch a character set and log into your accounts, you will likely be prompted to select which sub-account each game client should use, and this is where the window layout I recommended earlier makes this process simple for new players. You can tell exactly which character set slot you're currently focused on since each slot leaves a hole where it normally sits. Alternatively, you can also use the slot swap hotkeys I talked about a moment ago to easily switch between each game client and select the correct sub-account. Now, once you've logged in and reached the character selection screen, and assuming you've already created your characters, you'll want to verify that the Iceboxer add-on is present and enabled on each of them. Iceboxer creates this add-on in your add-ons folder when you export your settings and is required for basic functionality such as follow, assist, and interact, as well as all of the macros created within Iceboxer to properly function. So, once you've verified that it's there and turned on, go ahead and log into the game world. Now, if you first log in and are presented with the following pop-up, then you've either logged the wrong character into that particular slot, or the actual character name stored in ISBoxer is incorrect. I'd suggest checking out the video description for a few potential fixes, but if you ignore this message and continue forward at this point, expect basic functions for that character to not work. Also check the chat window on each of your characters to see if the ISBoxer add-on is printing out any information about conflicting keybinds. If it says anything about a keybinding with a modifier key attached to it, then it will likely be an issue. I'd suggest clearing any keybinds with modifiers in the game window that show up in the warning message of the ISBoxer add-on printout. And if you aren't seeing any of this information in your chat window, then the ISBoxer add-on is not enabled. Finally, before moving forward, I would highly recommend turning down your video settings on each of your characters at this time. Reason being is that many people play with their settings turned up while playing solo, but when multiboxing, multiple game clients put more stress on your hardware, and you will likely need to turn down some of your settings, including anti-aliasing, for smoother gameplay. So to get started in game, ensure that key maps are enabled and that repeater is disabled. If you move your main character and all of your other characters move as well, then repeater is still enabled and it should not be for normal gameplay. I'll also point out that the buttons in the upper left of the screen will not only allow you to click on them to toggle these two functions, but will also reflect what state they're currently in. Now in World of Warcraft, we don't need to create any macros for any of our characters thanks to the Iceboxer add-on handling everything for us. And to start off, you should initiate a party invite by pressing Shift-Alt-I. Then simply turn on repeater with Shift-Alt-R, or by clicking on the button in the upper left, then line up the cursors being broadcast over the Accept button on your other characters, accept the invites, 
and then finally disable repeater. After that, you'll want to test both follow and assist to make sure that they're working properly. You can test the follow function by putting some distance between the character you're playing from and the rest of your team, and then pressing Alt F. If everything is set up properly, then your other character should follow the character you're playing from. I recommend repeating this test on each of your characters to ensure that there are no issues. And if one or more of your characters fails this test at any point, then please refer to the video description for a brief summary of some quick potential fixes. Next, test Assist by targeting something on your main character, pressing Alt-A, and then checking to see if the rest of your team picked up the same target. I also recommend repeating this test on all of your characters as well, and it helps to either clear your targets before testing another character, or simply using a different target each time to eliminate any confusion on whether it's working properly or not. And again, if one or more of your characters fails this test at any point, then please refer to the video description for a brief summary of some quick potential fixes. Now, after you've got both follow and assist working properly, you can begin interacting with NPCs. The basic way of doing this is to pull up alongside the NPC, turn on repeater, and interact with them as you normally would, by clicking on them and navigating through their dialog options with the mouse. These are the same steps whether you're accepting a quest or turning one in, but if the NPC offers a choice of rewards, then you'll have to decide whether you want to grab the same one on all of your characters or pick and choose different ones. Now, if your camera angles are not lined up like mine were in this demonstration, then you may need to swap to each character and interact with the NPC separately. However, to combat misaligned camera views, World of Warcraft not only has camera presets built into the game client, which by default are bound to your home and end keys, but there's also an interface option to keep the camera positioned behind your character. In addition to those, you can mostly avoid the need to sync your camera angles when interacting with NPCs by using Interact with Target. I talk more about Interact with Target in the next video, but it's a very useful feature built into the game that can be integrated right into Iceboxer's setup, and it makes interacting with NPCs a breeze. Now, I'd like to point out that the Iceboxer wizard sets up one through equals on your keyboard's number row to broadcast to each of your game windows, and by default, it does so with a built-in auto assist. So that means rather than having to press my assist key every single time I target something, I can simply target it and begin casting my spell just as I normally would and the rest of my team will pick up the same target and begin casting as well. You can expand upon what the wizard sets up by using the mapped key wizard found under the wizard's menu in IS Boxer, and if you're interested in that, I talk more about this in the next video. In addition to the auto assist, I'd like to mention that it doesn't matter which character you want to lead from. The reason we tested that both follow and assist were working for your entire team was so that you could swap to another character and continue playing seamlessly. This not only helps when it comes time to do things like gathering quests, but if you eventually choose to enter into dungeons, then being able to lead from different party members can be very useful. So this is where I leave you. In closing, I will say that multiboxing may require a lot of setup and micromanagement at times, but in the end, I would argue that the reward is pretty satisfying. You've got the basic tools to begin multiboxing in World of Warcraft, but if you want more, then there is a second video which will give some additional information about both IS Boxer and World of Warcraft. With that said, thank you for watching. My name is Marai, and I will see you in the next video.